We're here at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. We are in the convergence of three really cool exhibits. Pauline, could you tell us a little bit about the exhibit that you're, you've brought to Kalamazoo? In terms of the national exhibition that's touring uh, coming from Harlem, the Kalamazoo Institute of Art is the third stop of six stops throughout the United States. And so how does Kalamazoo respond? So what's unique about what we've done is we have three distinct simultaneous shows on view that offer different perspectives on um, black art and culture across the diaspora. It's a very local conversation, but it also sounds like this is a national conversation. This is a national conversation. I'm very grateful to the board of directors here at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts because most museums have a permanent collection installation where when you go from time to time, those works don't change, they don't rotate. And we certainly have had that here. However, I express the need to disrupt the narrative. Our board, being courageous people, <laughs> said yes. And this is very important because within museums, those permanent collection installations are quite sacred. They don't change very often. And as far as we know, we are the only major American institution that has done this. What has happened here in Kalamazoo with, the, with, with black refractions is something that I think is important for us to talk about at the national museum level because I will guarantee you that there will be museums across this country that will be looking at Kalamazoo and looking at what happened here and the boldness and disruptiveness about what's happened here in a community that's um, less than 25% representing diversity, mm -hmm. having the entire museum devoted to artists of African descent. That is something that we need to applaud. I mean, this is, this is major and it's happening here in this, in this small community. I hope that some of, of that will permeate upwards to change certain statistics that are currently things that we're still dealing with. For example, as you look at Belinda and you look at me, we are, we are still a statistic because there are not too many African-American women that lead arts institutions. You're looking at two of maybe a very right. small number, <laughs> maybe five. Five or six? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nationally. Yeah, so you happen to have two of the, <laughs> of the, of the maybe five <laughs> in the same room. Yes, I hope that it continues, that stories like this and exhibitions like this change these statistics and make it such that maybe a young brown girl or boy seeing this exhibition might aspire to be a curator or museum director one day. And so that we could, we could have more diversity at the leadership level as well. This is high praise for your museum, but... You, you <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a humility going on here that... <laughs> as people walk in to experience this incredible show, what are some of the pieces that you think they should look at and what do they mean to you? I'll start with Black Refractions. One of my favorite works is a very early piece by Kehinde Wiley. Folks that know Kehinde's work today, as you know, he painted former President Obama's portrait. It's called Eminence. The reason that I like this work uh, so very much is not only because um, it's extremely, it's a, a very, very vibrant piece and it shows a very handsome African-American male that is standing very proudly in a business suit and he's um, against a green backdrop and he's long here taking up most of the canvas. It's a piece that speaks to all of us growing up as kids and thinking about what we want to be in the future and this is what Kehinde portrays so well in this piece about the black male and you know what he strives to be the kind of businessman the kind of proud person. So I will simply highlight two of our more recent acquisitions. The first one is a piece by Philomona Williamson and it's entitled Tender Breeze. And it's important to us because it's our first major painting by an African-American woman 
in the collection. Philomona is a wonderful artist and she uses very seductive colors. So these very easy, luring colors that just draw you into the piece. And you think the piece is going to be very happy and uplifting and it is in a way, but there's always a lot more to discover. When you look at the three young ladies that are in this painting, you will see one and she still has a, a doll uh, secured to her waist. And you know, that's always a very tricky thing as a, as a young woman, like when, when do you give up playing with dolls? And when do you want the security and comfort of your dolls, but people around you are starting to say, hey, you're, you're too old for that. It's a very complicated painting and it goes against the stereotypes of how we present children in artwork. Usually we depict childhood as extraordinarily happy time with kids playing and they're carefree. That doesn't represent the childhood of a lot of people. The other one uh, for me is just an extremely fun piece by Michelin Thomas, and it's of a panthera. And the symbolism here is the strong black American woman, strong in terms of sexuality, in terms of just strength in the community, and so much more. I just love the piece itself because it's large and it's bedazzled. There's so much glitter in it that it just comes out at you. Um, it's just a, a really fun piece, and there's so much symbolism in it. It means that I can show my strength as a woman and then you know, still still have that side of me that's about fashion and fun and, you know, just being a woman. The second piece I want to share with you is called Columbia by Tylon Sawyer, who is an artist out of Detroit. In the piece, the backdrop is an American flag, which is a symbol that has often been used in works of art, and that within itself can be interpreted in many different ways. In the foreground, there's a very striking portrait of an African-American woman, and her name is Sherazada Washington Parrish, and she is a poet in the Detroit area, and she goes by the name Columbia. So what Tylon Sawyer attempts to do in this painting is add the contributions of women to American history. So you can see Columbia as a feminized version of Columbus. She has a very strong, self-confident gaze, perhaps even confrontational. On her shoulders, she's carrying a baseball bat. Baseball is very much an American game. It's an unstoppable game in the U.S. We played baseball right through World War II. But also, in times of civil unrest, the baseball bat has been used to make a different point, and it has been used as a destructive element within our society. One of the things that I think uh, it says to me is that there are many different American experiences. What does it mean to be an American? And how can people of color represent America? I appreciate the time that we've had to talk to you. Thank you very much for your work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much you for guys, coming out. It's great to be time. in Kalamazoo. Great to be in Michigan. <laughs> Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.